Welcome to Love Always Self. I'm Shira. Hi, y'all. I'm Karista. And thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Love Always Self. Hey. Hello. (laughs) I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. For all you new listeners, welcome. We are so grateful to have you. And we're excited to see this uh, podcast keep growing. So don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Yes, yes. (laughs) Thank you very much. And we're very excited to have all of you beautiful listeners As Carrie said, I was reflecting on this week with you just a minute ago, and I was talking about how this upcoming week um, at work, I am, I'm a manager. And so I have people that report to me and we're at the time of the year where we have to do evaluations, but we don't just do evaluations for our employees. We also have to do it a self-evaluation. And I kept telling myself, I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to write all these evaluations. And it's like, yeah, I collect the information throughout the year and that's not a big deal. And there's going to be a lot easier because they're fabulous. And, but, oh, I'll save mine for last. And that's save the best for last, right? (laughs) That's the mindset you're getting at. (laughs) You know? And I was just like, oh, and I'm like dreading this going and, and bragging about myself aspect. And I was like, wow, what a concept that I'm having such a hard time just talking about the highlights of the things that I've done over this last year. It was very interesting to me because the reason that my people succeed is not just because of how well they're doing and how amazing that they are individually, but it's always a direct reflection as well including how your manager Mm -hmm. works with you and promotes you. And I, as their manager, should recognize that within myself. And it's like, I know that, right? I have that self-love and that self-care, but do I have it enough to self-promote? And that was something that I was thinking about today, as I need to do this today. And I was just like, wow, that's that's so amazing how so many of us probably feel this way. I find it interesting that you see it as bragging about yourself rather than just stating the facts about what you've been able to accomplish and how you perform. And on a secondary note, I think about those positive affirmations and that's what this is a practice in. This is a, a, um, a community share of your positive affirmations. Well, yeah. So number one, That's part of the thought process is that it feels like you're bragging about yourself, right? It feels egoic. Mm -hmm. And when you have to write these bullet points of highlighting the things you've done, that's what it feels like initially. Mm -hmm. And then once you get writing to it, because I do this every year and I'm very used to doing this. And trust me, I've written some pretty amazing self-evaluations. I do know that last year I just bullet pointed all the things that I did. I just stuck to the facts, right? Um, and I remember looking back at the list and there was like no emotional connection to it, like whatsoever. It was just like fact, 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 all the way down the list. And why can't emotions be facts? Well, they are facts, right? But when you're in a very corporate environment and you're trying to prove why you need a raise or a new level of increase, you do have to have this human capacity. So as a manager, I'm trying to make sure that I say this in the right way where I'm not revealing what I do because I'm not going to do that here. But like as a manager, though, I also have to make sure that I'm promoting my people. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you also need to outline that you're doing that in your own evaluation as part of like your own personal growth. So being a manager and in elevating other individuals, there's a lot of emotional connection to that. Right. And I'm going to be braggadocious and I'll highlight the fact that I have elevated several of my employees. And that's been one of the best gifts because I think as a manager, that should be your first take. You know, you have your job, but you also have the people and you're managing people and you're supposed to elevate them or at least help them get into the positions that they want to do and and succeed in their own personal careers. But you always have that self part Mm -hmm. as well. So... When I say brag, it does feel like that. 
It does feel like you're bragging about yourself. But why is that a bad thing? But I don't, and I don't think it's a bad thing. And so that's the part that's like the conundrum is like, why is it so difficult? Why do you resist it so much? Right. right. Why do you resist it so much? And why is that such a difficult thing to take on that you feel like that has to be last? And so this is kind of like the thought processes that I was having today. I was like, wow, that's really interesting, Shire, that you would think that in your own head that this is going to be like a difficult task. I, I'm just going to say the question in my mind. I'm not trying to cause any rifts here, but do you think your male counterparts have the same resistance? Oh, probably not. I mean, I see that, but then there are, I've had males report to me and I've seen some of their, um, I've seen some of the way that they like maybe have a lot of self doubt. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I've had to be that person to lift them up mm-hmm. in those conversations and, and help them see where they can be successful and where they've been successful. I think that's beautiful being able to provide that unbiased support. Yeah. Oh yeah. So Yeah. So that was kind of one of the, you can add that to your (laughs) list (laughs) and your (laughs) self-evaluation. It makes me think of uh, conscious biases or unconscious Mm -hmm. bias. Mm -hmm. And you go through that a lot as a manager, the trainings of not being, you know, unconscious uh, or establishing a, a knowing of what your unconscious biases are. Making the unconscious conscious. Right. Right. And so that's, uh, that's always been a, a, a treat. <laughs> I actually enjoyed mine this year. <laughs> that particular training, it was interesting because it went through an actual university uh, to present the training. And I mean, it's it's important that we learn to recognize these types of biases. Yeah. Otherwise, we're going to keep putting people in their boxes. Yeah. I say their boxes in any box. And that's something that we try to get out of ourselves is not putting ourselves in a box. So why would we continue to put other people in a box? Which is fascinating because just even talking about unconscious bias, it's the there's a lot of unconscious bias in in oneself to even feel like you're gonna have to put your own evaluation at the end because you don't you, it's a tough thought process or a tough conversation to have on paper and say, I did all these amazing and incredible things this year in just Mm -hmm. a year, right? It's only one year. And so that to me is a little entertaining. I'm, I'm finding it entertaining today that this is the thought processes that I'm having right now. It's very interesting that again, we have this resistance towards basically celebrating the things that we do and accomplish and experience. Right. Well, the other thing that was entertaining to me is that I could go into Canva and I could whip out a interior decor mock-up of I'm going to redo my office again because I'm never satisfied with that. But like that took me two seconds. And when I was done with it, I was like, yeah, good job, shy. That looks amazing. And I gave myself accolades and I like bragged about it by like sending you a picture, (laughs) like showing Steven uh, the image that I made. And I was like, yeah, that looks good. I'm going to do that. I mean, that definitely speaks to the passion part. Exactly. Exactly. It's like when you have something that you're so passionate about and that you're so connected to and you're enjoying every moment of it, it's so easy to just fall into this like, I did a good job. I just thought of like a piece of artwork, right? Like when an artist finishes a piece of artwork, they don't go and hide it. Well, I don't know, maybe they do, but the husband does but yeah (laughs) the point (laughs) is is to share that and show it off and allow other people to experience it as well yeah and so i i love that when you become passionate with something you're excited to share it yeah so we had to take a pause for a second because (laughs) uh webster my little fur baby had decided to go a little ham (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so we may have lost our train of thought a little bit just a bit um but i i keep wanting to pull this back to the importance of practicing the i ams the positive affirmations mm-hmm. because as we practice that and we get more comfortable with saying those positive things about us then that may actually make it easier to do your self evaluation and not just for work but even for personal reasons and spiritual reasons oh yeah absolutely 
And I agree. With, I agree. The positive affirmations are extremely helpful and, and seeing the self-worth mm-hmm. and affirming your self-worth and just allowing you to kind of think about and dive into like, what is it that you are positive about? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, maybe not even just positive about, but like, well, it's becoming aware of your patterns of how you talk to yourself. Right. Right. And I, I think that we could all use a little self-reflection time. And if you don't think so, well, then you definitely do. Uh, that's just my opinion. But when we do those kinds of things, it really offers up a lot of information yeah. to reconfigure what you're doing. Yeah, it does. I feel like, you know, when we're going through these personal evaluations, whether it's at home, whether it's at work, you know, whether it's in a situation that you've just experienced, and, and we do this all the time, right? Like if you think about the, like an argument that you've had, right? Or as an example, I sent you a text this past weekend and I had created a story in my head that whatever I sent, and this was part of my own self-evaluation, which went to negative town. And I created the story in my head that you were upset with what I said. And it wasn't anything to really even be upset about. And reading back on it, when you were I was like, so lost. I know. You, you were so you were confused. Like, are you mad at me? I was like, what? I, was like, I don't shit. understand where this is coming from. Are you okay? <laughs> I was like, shit. And, 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 you know, and just when I got your like, wait, what? I'm confused. And I was like, I, I scrolled back through it. And I was like, where did you get that from, Shira? You know, like, these are the things that I had to self-evaluate. And, and understand, like, where was that coming from, mm-hmm. right? Which is always this, like, fear that I'm not doing something good enough. And we all have that. We all experience this. And so even just me trying to write my own self-eval, I'm constantly looking for the things that I didn't do good enough. And so when I say bragging, it's because I'm thinking in my head, am I having to brag on the things that I didn't do good enough and turn it around and make it sound like I did do it mm-hmm. better? Do you know what I'm saying? So it feels like false. Right. It feels like false advertising. Mm. But I know that that's not true. I know what I've done throughout the whole year. I know that I've helped many individuals and I've created beautiful things. And so it's just kind of like, that's so nuts. And I know I'm aware of that. Like even that awareness that you know that you are self-critical in this way, it, in, in that itself, it creates for more opportunities for reevaluation and, you know, uh, choosing a different path or choosing to navigate things differently. It, it's just leading to more opportunities for growth. Right. And so even in those moments where you're doubting what you did, know that that too is still supporting your own soul's growth. Wow. Yeah. And, and it's a great reflection. It's mm-hmm. a, it's a great reflection for anyone that's coming across this and, you know, you can relate to this in any way. I'm just reflecting back to you exactly what I'm thinking versus what you're thinking. And that, and this is part of the process. This is part of our, our collective way to work together. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and while just switching gears is like a little bit here, but um, while we're talking about this, I, I was also thinking about this weekend this rush and need to get it done quickly. Mm-hmm. Right. Like I'm, I'm reaching this deadline. I'm reaching this time period. I can't seem to like find the time. <laughs> I also think you don't want to make time for it. I don't want to make time for it. I'm totally like procrastinating and I know that. And so now that I've procrastinated to the point of no return, I have no choice but to get it done. <laughs> so. Well, you know, just to, to give you a little bit of support here, I just want to let you know, Saturn has gone into retrograde, which is, again, those retrograde <laughs> words are all about review, reevaluate. And Saturn being about like the workplace and structure, it's perfect energy that's oh, supporting man. you in this goal today. I knew it. I knew it. And it's going to be retrograde, I think, until like October, or November. So, And then we had another weird thing today. Again, completely off topic, but we had another weird thing today where the Schumann residence. Yeah. in the last like 24, 48 hours apparently spiked. Yeah. Off the charts. Yeah. So when I say today, I mean, I saw the information today, but yeah, off the charts, like something literally every person that has done the review of that, of that charting said 
nobody has ever seen this before. If you don't know what the Schumann Residence is, you should look it up. Uh, yeah. It's spelled S-C-H-U-M-M-A-N. And it is, I guess, if you want to put it into words, the heartbeat of the earth. Yeah. Which affects all of us. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I was curious because when I saw this information today, I have been experiencing headaches for multiple days. And no matter what I did, I couldn't get rid of these headaches. Mm. And and I was like, oh, I wonder if that's a symptom of that. This like realigning, readjusting the re's. <laughs> realigning, readjusting to the energy of the planet. Um, yeah, my brain's all over the place at the moment. Yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, I said this earlier that that, that ADD mm-hmm. sense, I, I think it's a byproduct of being overwhelmed. I'm not saying if you were diagnosed ADD or ADHD that it's a byproduct, byproduct of being overwhelmed. I'm just saying like this experience of feeling like all over the place yeah. is is that byproduct of not feeling like you have enough time to do the things and being pulled in different directions to take care of things for other people versus figuring out how and when to take care of you. Yeah. This is a consistent thing. It's like a repeated pattern. And as we've been told by everyone and and our guides and, and I, I know I've channeled this like over and over again, if you see or receive a repeated pattern And even if it's not identical every time, but there's a common theme to it, it's usually something you were supposed to be learning and working through. As soon as you said that, I remembered this thought that I had over the weekend. And I've been very blessed and lucky to have the weekend I have had because it was filled with me setting a boundary and saying, I need this time to relax. Another reword. Um, But... After relaxing for a time, I suddenly got energized to declutter. And I had this thought in my head that it's time to clear out the things that no longer serve you so that new things can come in. Yeah. And that's what that made me think of. Interesting. Interesting. There there are several things that are, (laughs) I would say, old patterns of behavior Mm -hmm. that I could stand to clear out and and allow new patterns of behavior to come in and self-doubt um and this whole thought process to constantly prove myself over and over again i feel like is a old behavior (laughs) an old thought pattern that i could learn to let go of and let go has been like an an enormous theme for me lately Mm -hmm. patience and letting go Mm -hmm. so maybe it's patience in letting go (laughs) Yikes. <laughs> That's a big one. That will that will be no small feat. So yeah. Speaking of letting go of things that no longer serve you and integrating new things that serve you for your greatest and highest good, my weekend. Um so this is not our normal recording day. And we were actually going to record early so that we could have time to spend with our dads on father's day. Right. And we were supposed to record three days ago and I came over and I was not in a space. I was just low vibe and it wasn't anything in particular. It was just like I was swimming in the muck and you know, you, you were um, amazing at giving me space to just hang out on Friday. That's what we did. We, we had a glass of wine. We hung out. We just right. relaxed and decided that first off, we're grateful for the flexibility. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and second, this is not the time or space for recording. We can do it at a later time. Right. Um, and so this weekend I actually said what I needed to say in setting my boundary with my spouse. And it wasn't anything like argumentative or negative or anything like that. It was just, he asked me what I wanted to do and I told him, I just want to relax. I just want to be. I don't want the TV on. You know, we did finish a movie, but I was like, I just want to sit with you yeah. in silence. And he was on his phone, which didn't bother me. It just gave me an opportunity to zone out and really just mellow yeah. and breathe. And it was about an hour into that when I started getting little motivational hits. And I felt like my motivation and my drive has been depleted. Because I'm doing everything that I don't necessarily want to do, that I just need to do. Mm. 
And so there was no drive or motivation to do the things that I wanted to do, including take care of my own needs. And so that downtime and that respect and kindness that I received from my spouse to do that actually allowed me to reconnect with my self-care. And so there were a couple things that I got done in the house that I've been wanting to do, um, hanging a couple pieces of decor, and then also like painting my, my office wall and just decluttering my space a little bit because I am somewhat of a collector. (laughs) <laughs> of the books <laughs> and other numerous things. Um, and so I, I just spent a little time um, decluttering and getting rid of some things that I'd been on the fence about getting rid of. And I I just felt lighter. Hmm. And there was an evening, it was the new moon, and I was reading a book that is called Shakti Woman, and it's about reconnecting with uh, the divine feminine. And in this book, it talked about like our connection with the moon. The moon in astrology is like the feminine nature, the divine feminine, whereas the sun is the divine masculine. And it talked about creating a ritual to where you are learning about how you feel with the moon's placement. So as it moves through the 12 astrological signs, uh, it takes about 28 days to do that. And so every two and a half days, it changes signs. So just becoming aware of your emotions, your energy levels, even your you know menstrual cycle if you're female, and just learning about how it feels in connection to the stars or to the moon. And so I was like, this sounds like an interesting exercise. So I started doing that. And then in that practice of journaling that night, I said, I want to have a regular morning routine where I am giving myself the self-care that I need and the space that I need to connect on a regular basis. It's huge. Because I have not been doing that. And when we went to the retreat, um, we had a Reiki practitioner come in and she encouraged me to start doing Reiki on myself on a regular basis to learn and connect what it feels like and, and deepen that knowing. So when we get these feelings, we can have a better understanding of what it's related to. And so I wrote down in my journal, I was like, what my ideal morning would be or my ideal morning routine. And that was Saturday night. And I was like, I'm going to implement this tomorrow. And I started. I started uh, yesterday and I did it again today. It does require me to wake up a little bit earlier, but I am worth it. Even though I'm taking away an hour of sleep, I'm giving myself an hour of universal energy and connection. Beautifully said. And that sounds like a decent trade off. Yeah. Because I don't think an extra hour of sleep was really serving me as well as I had hoped. Um, and so this, it's been weird because you and I were talking about time yeah, and how it feels like there's not enough time in the day to get all the things done. And it was like this little aha moment that, yeah, it feels like there's not enough time to get everything that everybody else wants us to do yes, done. That. And then also add in what we need to do for ourselves and then what we want to do for ourselves. And so this new routine that I'm doing is strictly for myself to give to myself. And even just the experience of taking time and even verbalizing that need to my spouse really gave me a lot of energy that I really wasn't expecting. It's like an empowerment double charge. Yeah. I didn't expect to, you know, plant five plants outside in a hundred degree heat. I didn't plan on painting my office wall. I didn't plan on hanging the decor items. I didn't plan on doing all these other things, but I did them and it felt so good to yeah. just like get it off my plate. And there's like this sense of peace. And then what I noticed is in doing these practices of slowing down and calming down and rebalancing that energy is it actually did feel like time slowed down. Yeah. And I think I said, when you told me that I was like, my knowing says that because you were going with the flow Mm -hmm. and you were moving in a flow state, that that's what that feels like. It's a slower, calmer, time construct even though in in my head time constructs are human made and (laughs) man-made 
<laughs> and the clock is probably my least favorite thing at the moment. So, <laughs> yeah, I honestly think that when and these are the practices that we've talked about. Um, I can't remember what episode it was, but I know that there are so many challenges that you can do for yourself. And when I say that, I mean, just like challenging yourself to have a day where you only go with the flow. What comes next in your head? Do that. The next thing that comes in your head, do that and see how everything just aligns perfectly Mm -hmm. in the way that it should for your highest and greatest good. And it's so often that all these other little distractions, whether they're thought distractions because of whatever self doubt that you're having, or they're a distraction in the sense of like, I am stuck in an emotional state because of how I felt two days ago. And so it's just carried on over and over again. And I could easily have pulled myself into that today, but I'm choosing, I'm choosing not to, I'm choosing not to be stuck in the state of like, damn it, I don't have enough time to get everything done. And I'm going to make the choice of like, you know what? I've got family coming over today. I'm going to hang out with them. I'm going to have a great time. I'm going to be in those moments when that's done. The next thing is I got to write these evaluations (laughs) and get it done. And then when I get it done, it'll be one thing off my list of things to do and I'll allow myself to flow even easier tomorrow. And those are the thought processes that I, I have to navigate into, right? And I'm navigating into it while I'm talking to you about it, but it's still it's still a navigation sometimes. Absolutely. And sometimes it's easier to navigate than it is others. In other words, sometimes it's easier <laughs> to choose what you're going to experience and how you're going to experience than say when you haven't been giving yourself the self-care. And the fact that you gave yourself self-care gave you an opportunity to even see the flow Mm -hmm. and experience the flow. And I'm a completely different person today than I was three days ago. Yes, you are. Like I I walked in and (laughs) Shira, you said, wow, you look bright today. Lighter. And I was like, yeah. Yeah. I was like, I feel lighter. I feel brighter. You don't have the weight of the world on your shoulders today. Yeah. Dragging you down. This yeah. like gloominess. Yeah. Today yeah. it just feels like sunshine and butterflies. You get those moments where you like see a friend or you see a family member or your coworker even, you know, whatever. And you know what their normal baseline is or at least the baseline they've been showing you for a while. And then you see the full them when they're not in a great place. And so when you watch that, you're just like, oh, okay. Things are not as they should be for you at the moment. And so that's what I wanted to do three days ago when we sat down and we were like supposed to record that day. I was actually in like a completely different place. I had discovered some new AI thing. You were super excited. Pumped. I was like, I'm, I got a three day weekend. I can't believe I have a three day weekend. Well, I'm excited. Let's do this. And you came in and you you had a big old red balloon and I popped it. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so funny. I, I mean, in a, in a sense, but I also know that if if that was reversed, you would hold that space for me in a heartbeat. And so it was just about, oh, shit, because I was in my own little like world of like, I got to show you all this cool stuff. Get in here and see all these things. Look what I read. Let me read it to you. And I was like on a roll. And then I finally like it dawned on me that you were not in the same place at all. And I was like, oh, what's happening? Mm-hmm. And then I, I gave you that space to talk. And I was like, you know what? Let's exit this room. Let's go sit out there. I'm going to grab wine. We're chilling. We're stepping away from the work. Y- you need it. I need it. Let's go that. Let's go yeah, do that. Yeah. When everything feels like work, it's time to step away for a little while. Yeah. Yeah. When putting on your shoes feels like a job. <laughs> Just your pants in Just general. <laughs> Brushing your teeth. (laughs) When removing the blanket from the bed feels like a job. (laughs) If you have space, don't do it. (laughs) Right. Sometimes we just need cozy, nurturing, being at home. Yeah, we do. And I'm sure that, you know, for anybody that's living in Texas right now, it's hot here and that's exhausting. (laughs) Oh my God. And and that I I acknowledge that that was actually part of it. Um, you know, the driving. And you, I had talked about this during the retreat recap episode where it felt like not just felt it became, we became acutely aware of how constantly overstimulated we are. Mm 
Yeah. And I feel like that was like the hole that got put at the bottom of my barrel was mm. the drive because it was hot and it was congested and like trafficy and you know, there's construction and I was just like, ugh. You gotta watch out for people. I mean, you just really don't realize how much of your um awareness power you're using just to drive a car. And so it's just that that by itself, just making that drive at that hour of the day, especially, I know that that's got to be exhausting. Because I was actually surprised you were coming over that day. I was like, oh, you are? Okay. And uh, I just remembered this uh, little piece of information. When you sit and do nothing all day, like physically don't do anything all day, the mental processes, that takes a significant portion of your resting metabolic rate. Like yeah. just the, the energy that your body consumes to just be. So when we are constantly overstimulated, constantly having to navigate, switch back and forth through, you know, different tasks and multitask, cause that's a crock of shit. It's like such an overload that you don't give your body and your brain enough credit for everything that it's doing. I keep thinking when you just said that about the multitasking, I keep thinking of this like, I don't know if this gift even exists, but it would be awesome if it does of like multiple arms, like the body staying still, but you've got all these arms manipulating things at the same time, which is not human. That is a made up character. <laughs> I mean, so. I want to say like multitasking, the majority of the time we're not actually doing two things at once. No, you're just switching your attention exactly. at a rapid rate. That. Yes. Right. Yeah. Studies have been done for this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look those up. Mm -hmm. You can validate <laughs> the information on your own. <laughs> right. <laughs> We've Do your done. own research. We've already done it. Yeah. More or less. <laughs> More or less. Oh, man. So, yeah. Great talk. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> All righty. Ready to switch on over? Yeah. We're going to do the collective card reading now. Yay. And today we will be using the Priestess of the Light Oracle deck by Sandra Ann Taylor and Kimberly Weber. And so we drew three cards today and we have not seen them. The first one did flip over. I did see it, but I didn't <laughs> read it. Full transparency. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So the first card today is sensuality, feminine wisdom, and passion. No way. Okay. And I love this card. And this is why, you know, I, I knew I saw the tiger. Um, this card is basically the image that's on the box uh, for the deck. But there is a beautiful warrior woman with like a tiger leaning over her shoulder. And you can tell that they're like, communing together right. and what what tigers represent to me is very like fierce and strength and just like empowered mm. you know interestingly enough um when i look at this card and a couple of things are standing out to me uh number one so the imagery of a tiger and what you were saying about that and the embrace that this woman has with this tiger I was thinking about all of the different aspects of us when we're in like relationships and like when we're trying to kind of cope a little bit and maybe this is just my own experience but there's a bit of a coping mechanism that I'm dealing with at the moment with getting older and not feeling as sensual as I did when I was younger. And so finding this like this balance and this grace within myself. And it's like, it's like, hey, it's okay that, you know, there's been a change in structure. And so this is kind of where my head was at when I first saw this card, that there's a reminder that that, that still lives inside of me and it still comes out and every once in a while, but maybe it doesn't need to come out every day like it did before, you know. But then I also am thinking about the fact that we had this whole conversation earlier and we didn't record that part because she started talking about spiders and <laughs> and and how they are connected to the divine feminine. Yes. 
And so I find that very interesting that that's the first card that came out right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think too, like when we are expressing our sensuality, we've been taught what that should look like. Mm -hmm. And so remembering that those were just expectations set by other people and you can give them a big F you and just stand in your own sensual power and what feels right to you, express it how you do naturally. And sensuality, it does require a, maybe not require, but I know for me to be sensual, I need a level of trust Mm -hmm. and to be able to be vulnerable and know that I am with somebody that respects me and loves me and accepts me. Absolutely. And so giving that to ourselves too. Yeah. Great points. I, I just love this card because it looks like they're, they're one in the same. Mm. Right. Right. The tiger and the woman, like they may look separate, but they are one in the same and they're deeply connected. Beautiful card. All right. Card number two. Wings of light becoming something new. Wow, this really supports what you just said, Shira. <laughs> oh, interesting. Oh, I didn't even read from the book at all. Oh, well. Oh. <laughs> I don't think we need to. It's not needed up for that yeah, other one. Yeah. Yeah. Wings of light. Wow, how do we even describe this? Um, there's a figure, you're seeing the profile of the body and it looks like the flash with the light yeah, behind it. Yeah. You know, moving super quick. Um, the superhero character, the flash. Yeah. Yeah. And and so that's kind of the first thought that I had when looking at the imagery of this card. Absolutely beautiful. If you're listening to this on audio, definitely come check us out on YouTube so you can see this visually motivation to come to our channel and hit subscribe. (laughs) So becoming something new. So first and foremost, um, when we're becoming something new, this is a transition. This is a transformation So I know that that's what this is connected to is I'm seeing a connection with um, this reevaluate and reassess and review and, you know, even reward. Um, Because when we are able to clear out some of the clutter of things that no longer serve us, that's when we step forward and allow new things to fill our life, whether that's new habits, new loves, new furniture, whatever, right. you know, new books. <laughs> <laughs> I keep hearing this, like this transitioning after you let go of something. Right. So say like, um, like a donation mm-hmm. when you donate 10 books and you get 10 new ones because you've made space for it. I did it backwards, but that's okay. <laughs> I bought 10 books and then, and I then you donated. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever, you know, <laughs> Who said it had to go one way, you know? I was literally about to say, who said you always had to put your first foot forward? <laughs> Why can't you step to the side a little, a little box step? <laughs> you can go backwards first. It's totally cool. Um, so in the book, uh, this confirms a powerful time of personal transition, perhaps even total transfiguration is upon you. Your spirit is working from within to bring radical shifts into your attitude and energy. Old feelings of being stuck will drop away with every step forward you take. This shift can be so significant that it could redefine you and reveal the essential nature of your soul and even that sensuality. It's like they know something. It was interesting to hear the the step forward part as well, because in this card, if it's a very exaggerated look like they're stepping forward. She's flying forward. She's flying forward like the flash. (laughs) It's an exaggerated step forward. It's like a giant leap. (laughs) Right. Oh, man. I remember somebody telling us uh, one of their favorite quotes, and I'm not going to remember it verbatim, but like, take the leap. You don't have to know that the net is there. You just have to trust it. Mm. Yes. That one's hard. (laughs) Totally. Agreed. Totally. (laughs) All right. Card number three. Grateful optimism. Joyous view of the future. Wow. These cards. So this woman, she, there's definitely like, um, she's definitely a goddess. Those are, looks like blue herons behind her. 
Um, I don't remember what those stand for. Oh, I've the birds. Up before. Yeah, I, I at first thought it was kind of like uh, representing Medusa, but then I looked closer and yeah, they're they're birds. They look like herons. She just looks like she's got jewelry like just glowing from her from her forehead at the third eye area from the chest from that throat and heart chakra this is just a really uh cool and blue card she looks like a cross between a light being Mm -hmm. or like a, a person made of nothing but light but also like a statue at the same time so i'm getting this like sense of stillness in your great in being grateful so like like you see this like smile on her face and the looking off to the side, but I get this sense of being still with it, right? And I just keep thinking about like whenever you're sitting in gratitude and you're doing these things that are allowing you to feel more positive in life, that you just have a bit of more stillness, kind of like the experience you had this past weekend, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? Where time moves slower because... You had so much positive things happening in this flow-like state. Okay, so I'm reading from the book because I haven't gotten two of these cards before, so this is fun. (laughs) This is a reminder that your appreciation for the present is inextricably connected to your optimism for the future and to the dreams and desires you will achieve. After all, it is difficult to manifest happy results from ongoing dissatisfaction. Mm. Mm. This appreciation is more lighthearted, a blissful sighting of all the little experiences that bring joy to your life. Once you frame more happy perceptions of the past and present, you can look to the future with equally joyous expectation. So lift your perceptions, elevate your outlook, and feel the joy and optimism expanding in your being. Pretty on point. (laughs) It's pretty on point with this whole spread is like, oh, hey, Here's your confirmation of everything you guys have been talking about today. (laughs) So going back to the wings of light, I didn't read this part in the book because I wanted to see what this third card was, but it actually says that we should take note of the cards that are lying on either side Hmm. um, because they could indicate specific details about the types of changes on the horizon. Okay. Now I'm intrigued. Yeah, me too. I, I was like, in the literal sense, when you are staying more present and you're experiencing more optimism, your sensuality comes a lot easier. <laughs> well, I mean, honestly, there's some truth to that. Right. I know that when I get time to rest and spend time and energy with myself, I know that I actually experience a boost of energy in my sensuality and in my maybe wanting to be intimate. Right. And so I think that that just is an alignment with this whole idea that to be there for others and be a part of something with somebody else, you really need to also take care of you and prioritize you. And this brings me actually to a message that I got from somebody today that when things come up in life. They're always going to come up. There's always going to be new events, new things that find their way onto your plate. And you may not always have time to go all in and everything that you want to do for yourself, but it is important, like vital that you do little things for yourself every day. And when you can create the space to go all in. Yeah. And I think also like when you get to that space of that sensuality, you are connected more to that optimism and that joy. And like you feel more connected to that other person as well. If you are being intimate with somebody else, it's not for everybody. Um, And just when we think of like something new, there's this sense of excitement to experience that something new. Yeah. Yeah. And so really being in the present moment too, you said that earlier, reminding yourself to stay in this moment. So when those other things find their way onto our plate. And they will. And they will. Really making sure that you are taking time for you in the smallest ways, in the intentional ways, because that's key. It's, it's about intention. It can be having a glass of water and intentionally being grateful for everything that that water is doing for your body. 
I keep getting this message about like while you're talking uh, specifically about pay attention to the things that are coming in that remove you from the feelings of being in the present moment, Mm -hmm. like pay attention to those things. Um, And so while I was getting that thought, I was like, so why would that happen? Why would we continuously receive more distractions, more complications in our ability to stay present? And the response I received was, it is part of our existing human nature to allow it. Mm. And that's one of the things we need to overcome. I was like, oh, snap. Okay. (laughs) The first word that popped in my head was our choice to procrastinate on things sometimes can cause that too. We are literally the creators of our own distractions and our own perceptions and our own ability to cause more complications than are necessary in our own lives. And I recognize that even within myself, I'm recognizing that just this past week and this weekend. And there are so many things that I could accomplish and could do, but because of my lack of taking care of self throughout the week, I don't find the energy. I don't want to find the energy. Yes. Yeah. And I was thinking about even editing our last episode and how I kept putting it off too. (laughs) And I was like, okay, Friday night. All right, fine. I'll get to it. And then didn't happen. And then Saturday I had it on my list, you know, I had a list of (laughs) to do's or want to do's or whatever. And Saturday I was like, normally my day that I do all the editing and I didn't, I didn't touch it. Not once. Good. And after doing my self-care and taking care of my needs, it was so easy to do it the next day. Exactly. (laughs) Like there's not, there wasn't a level of resistance or even resentment, you know, of resentment meaning like, ugh, I have to do this. Right. Right. So how I've been feeling about those evals. So, uh. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so I got to make the choice. You got to make the choice. And I and I'm willing to bet that when you are able to stay present, when you are able to get the re- relaxation and the self-love and the self-care and do the things that are you're taking care of yourself and you're bringing that energy back in more naturally versus forced, then half the things that feel like work no longer feel like work. Mm-hmm. And I know that and it's just a matter of getting back into it. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Cool. Oh, you're gonna speed through those today. I'm gonna speed through those today. Saturn is supporting you. <laughs> so, come on, Saturn. <laughs> I I understand that you got the wings and all that. <laughs> <laughs> the wings. I think I meant to say rings. Rings. There you go. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh, well. oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> if you're enjoying our content, please don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you're notified of any future episodes. We really do appreciate all of you beautiful subscribers that we have today. Absolutely fantastic having you a part of our community and us being a part of yours. And we hope that we're doing everything we can to enlighten your day in and lift way. you up and lift you up. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And of course, we have social media. So at Love Always Self, you can follow us on now TikTok, even though I haven't added the icon yet <laughs> to our little pop up. You can follow us on TikTok, Facebook and Instagram at any point in time. And of course, we also have a website. LoveAlwaysSelf.com. I almost <laughs> said the W's again. This is just part of me letting, letting go of my hold. <laughs> One slow step at a time or episode at a time. Uh, Anyway. But it's funny. (laughs) It is funny. Yeah. So thank you all so much for joining us and we hope you have a wonderful rest Mm -hmm. of your day. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to love first, love last, and love always. (laughs) Bye, Bye, everybody.
Hey listener, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us in this moment. We hope you enjoy today's episode and we look forward to our next connection. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow to stay notified of new content from Love Always Self. If you have any questions or topics you'd like for us to discuss, please hit us up on any of our social media platforms linked in the show notes below. I'm Karista. And I'm Shira. And until next time, remember to love first, love last, and and love love always. always. Love Always Self podcast is meant for entertainment purposes only. We do not make any warranties about the completeness, reliability, and accuracy of the information presented in this podcast. Any action you choose to take upon the information in this podcast is strictly done so at your own risk, and we will not be held liable for any losses and damages in connection with the use of our podcast. Any and all medical concerns should be addressed with a licensed healthcare provider, as well as any questions that may be derived from the information discussed in this podcast.